Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Alicia DiBernardo. She's joining us here from Janssen to discuss a novel patient recruitment strategy for patients with multiple sclerosis that was presented at the Actrams meeting. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. DiBernardo. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Neil. Well, I mentioned that you were joining us here from Janssen. Give us a bit of your professional background and talk briefly about your role at Janssen. Thank you. Yeah, so I am the Vice President for Global Medical Affairs and Neuroscience. I'm a neurologist by training. Um, I did my uh, training at Mass General um, at Harvard and um, also did a postdoc in multiple sclerosis at the Harvard Institutes of Medicine. So uh, this is a disease area uh, that I have spent a good portion of my life uh, trying to make a difference in, and really, really happy to be able to talk to you about this um, new innovation that we've brought forward from in, in Janssen. Well, what can you tell us about multiple sclerosis and uh, what the current treatment landscape for this condition looks like? Uh, it's, yeah, it's a great it's a great way to start the uh, discussion. Multiple sclerosis is um, a snowflake disease uh, in that it really affects every patient differently. No two uh, court, you know, no two courses are, are alike exactly. Because it's an autoimmune disease um, where parts of your immune system kind of get miswired and they start to mistake things that are you for things that are not. And in this case, in multiple sclerosis, it's the, um, it's the insulation around uh, neurons um, called um, a myelin made by oligodendrocytes. Now, oligodendrocytes they have the capacity to to regenerate. So if they're damaged, you know, new oligodendrocytes can kind of migrate in and repair the um, the the lesion. But unfortunately, what happens is a bystander injury for neurons. Um, so when they're demyelinated um, during the process of MS, sometimes the, the damage is is irreversible, and neurons um, actually die. Um, and unfortunately, neurons are the really one cell type in the body that has no regenerative capacity. So um, we, we, we think of this as a now uh, these days as an, as an immune mediated uh, neurodegenerative disease um, because you can actually see um, you know the brain loss um, and spinal cord loss uh, with, with um, poorly controlled multiple sclerosis. And the treatment landscape is very congested right now. There are a lot of options. I, I'm a lumper, so I tend to kind of group things together mm-hmm. in terms of the um, original uh, disease-modifying treatments or DMTs. These were low-efficacy uh, kind of injectable interferons. And then um, the field evolved towards higher-efficacy agents that were kind of in two big classes. One were... Um, when are the cell trafficking inhibitors uh, like Tysabri or um, in the sphingosine 1-phosphate uh, inhibitors of which uh, penesamide is one? It, these just um, kind of prevent this, the immune cells from getting to um, the brain or the spinal cord to do their damage. So that's one big group of the higher efficacy. The other are, um, for the most part, uh, cytotoxic. Um, these are uh, some of them are repurposed, you know, chemotherapy drugs like um, um, ocrelizumab um, that, that destroy parts of the immune system in order to have um, uh, reduce reduce the immune attack on the on the CNS. This is kind of the current um, understanding of MS, you know, uh, as um, a very serious immune mediated form of neurodegeneration, ultimately. And that the treatment landscape is has a lot of agents, but you can kind of group them into you know those three big buckets for the most part. Um, you know the low lower efficacy injectables, um, and then the higher efficacy um, agents that that are divided into kind of the cell trafficking inhibitors uh, that just keep um, parts of the immune cell away from uh, the central nervous system, and um, and then the and then the things that interfere with um, uh, immune cell uh, numbers or actually destroy uh, immune cells like the cytotoxic agents. Now, I do understand that there was some data presented at the America's Committee for Treatment and Research in Multiple Sclerosis or the ACTRAMS 2022 meeting. I uh, mentioned that uh, at the beginning of our discussion concerning 
novel patient recruitment strategies. Uh, what can you tell us about this uh, this information that was presented and about the the Ponvo trial? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, the, so the novel patient recruitment strategy that we're using in the Ponvo trial um, is really exciting. And Ponvo is short for penetimod versus ocrelizumab. Um, it's a real world uh, evidence study um, that's going to be a prospective observational study um, comparing um, uh, the S1P1 um, monoselective um, uh, um, antagonist penesimod uh, to um, an anti-CD20 agent, in this case, ocrelizumab, one of the kind of cytotoxic. Looking at um, the effect on fatigue is the primary endpoint uh, because, of course, we think that we have a, uh, we're testing the hypothesis that we have a, a direct CNS effect because we do cross the blood brain barrier and we know that um, CD20s don't. Um, and we're looking also at efficacy as a secondary. So now the, the novel patient recruitment strategy is that we actually recruit the patient in the real world setting in the clinic after a physician has decided to start the patient either on penesimod or on ocrelizumab. Mm -hmm. This is different than what's usually done. Um, usually in head-to-head uh, -head, um, kind of studies, um, uh, uh, the, the clinician kind of loses the choice about the treatment um, once the patient is you know, enrolled in a study and then randomized you know, by a computer program either to one of the two arms. In this case, we've actually moved that um, um, enrollment after uh, the point that the, the physician has decided, oh, this is a patient that's gonna, that I, that I want to try penesimod on, or this is a patient that I want to try ocrelizumab on. So it's, um, it's, it's um, novel in that we have, um, we have really kind of changed um, the, the point at, at, at which the patient is enrolled in order to keep this uh, really real world um, so that we're actually not interfering with uh, the clinical decision making um, about the treatment choice at all, but we're actually kind of uh, beginning the study after that decision has been made um, and, and um, looking at the, the primary endpoint on fatigue and then the secondary endpoint on non-inferiority in relapses. So basically targeting as opposed to randomization? It's actually kind of, um, I don't want to say pseudo-randomization because that makes it seem like it's um, not as good as randomization. Mm -hmm. We're going to apply a statistical um, you know, procedure, which is actually well known. Um, people have been using this in real-world studies for a long time. It's called propensity matching. So uh, we'll achieve um, arms that are balanced as if they had been randomized uh, without using randomization by this upfront matching uh, technique. Upfront matching is a way to achieve randomized um, um, like cohorts in different arms without randomization. Um, so it, it looks at all of the different characteristics, um, the propensities as it were, of individuals that usually randomization would, would you know, assort equally into different arms. And we, we do that um, upfront matching in, in, in order to achieve you know, those, those kind of very balanced arms. Um, so we kind of pre-specify what those are. Um, and then we have a certain number of slots for people, for instance, you know, with, with, with propensity X, Y, and Z. And once we have met that, then we don't accept any more of those types of patients so that we are able to kind of, like I said, achieve randomized like cohorts without randomization. This is going to be a big innovation for real world studies. Uh, the 21st Century Cares Act um, by Congress actually asked the FDA to figure out how we can have more rigorous real world data um, rather than just retrospective database you know, searches. So this is you know, this is something that I that I think can really advance our ability to do um, the multiple kind of comparisons between MS agents that that are really going to help clinicians to understand, 
in the real world, um, how different agents stack up um, and help them kind of make choices for their patients. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning, Doctor. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Hopefully, we'll speak again as uh, as the field evolves and treatments are, are uh, developed. Absolutely. I would look forward to it. Thank you for the time. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Alicia DiBernardo. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.